Right. Yeah. I've been in NFL. Uh, yeah, I got my license in July 2018. Okay. So, yeah, almost, yeah, two, a little over two and a half uh, going on three years now, man. So, very nice. Very nice. So, talk to us about that, Sahar. So, how, how'd you get in FFL? We obviously, so we were your first, this was your first insurance opportunity. How'd you get involved? For sure. Great question. Um, I was in banking before. That's what I used to do. I was in banking for almost a little over 10 years. And um, um, there was a side of me that always wanted to try something for myself, you know. And one day I was looking at, uh, at uh, job opportunities. And uh, I went to Craigslist, bro. And uh, I replied to an ad from Joe Miller. He's with Trey Honeycutt, you know. Um, sure. And uh, I replied to his ad and, uh, I, I, you know, I, I, that's it. That's the only company. That's the only company I've been with family first life. Wow. A Craigslist ad, man. Craig, that's Craigslist so, ad. that's so funny to hear now. It seems so shady. Like, you know, only, only drugs deals happen on Craigslist anymore. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> that's, yeah, bro. that's awesome. Wow. Craigslist wow. So, ad. so, so obviously you got into it. You haven't always been a, Hall of Fame producer. Well, let me not get ahead of myself. So talk to us about your beginning. Did you jump right in? Was it a part-time deal? Obviously, so you were cold market. You didn't know no. any of the people. So, so talk no. to us about the beginning and how it looked for you. Cool. Um, so here's the thing. When I was in banking, my job was restructuring people's mortgages. So I wasn't like oh. on retail. You know, I wasn't like on retail opening accounts. Actually, I did do that a little bit when I first started in banking, but most of my experience in banking was restructuring mortgages. Meaning when people fell behind mm. on their mortgage, you know how it goes, collection calls first. <laughs> right. But as soon as the homeowner expressed any type of hardship, like, hey, listen, I just lost my job or something like that, then the call came to our departments. And my job was to literally help the homeowner keep their home. So I will lower their rates, extend their terms. I will redo a brand new mortgage. Doing that job, I saw the ugly side of things, which was when people, when we got the phone call too late, bro, when the surviving spouse, surviving family member called in to say that the breadwinner didn't come home and they wanted to modify their loan. Well, those conversations were totally different because I, it went from, okay, you're still working. You're just not earning the same amount of money. Let me see how can I help you to wait. There is no income. The breadwinner is right. gone. So we can't modify to zero. You know, the right. bank, they'll, they'll lose one finger. They're not going to lose a whole arm. So right. that literally led me to life insurance. So hmm. I think it's funny how, you know, exam effects that Sean Mike pays for all of us. Yeah. I did that on my own. I paid for exam effects on my own. I started looking into life insurance before I even applied. So because I saw in the banking world, I already believed in it. Hmm. So, so I went ahead and, 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 wow. and passed it. I did all that on my own. I examined FX. I took my, I took my test. And when I passed my test, that's when I started lo thinking, okay, now what do I do with this? And I started looking for companies and I always, Uh, we're losing a little bit, Sahara. I don't know if it's me or if it's or if it's you. Life You're breaking up. Was lucrative. I always knew that. Um, uh, I don't. I, I can't. What about now? Okay, that's a little bit better. There we go. I'm so sorry, man. Um, if I have to move, I'll move. I just don't know how far I can move without to get better reception. I apologize to you and your team. Um. No, no, no worries. But you were saying, so you are already, you already believing in life insurance. You already believed in it. That's an amazing place to come from, especially considering how many mortgage leads, you know, we do. You have such an angle to come at it because you're like, look, literally, I've been in these situations where right. people needed yeah. this and didn't have it. That's awesome. That, that, that's so great. So, so, so did you transition pretty straight or was it a part-time? deal i went straight so um 
my story is a little bit more complicated. Um, 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 I, I don't, I want to make it short for the sake of time. Um, but yes, I, I, I literally came in full in full time. Once wow. I got my license, once I finally got my license in and, and, and I was able to, to go in the field, I came in full time into family first life. Um, that's awesome. And, and I did, I guess we can transition to your question as far as how I started. If you want, right. Is that, is sure, that sure. So Gabriel, I, I, honestly, I came and I was, I actually hit the ground running. I, I was, I, I did 20 K within my third month. I was already doing 20 K. So what happened to me was from July, Ju July, 2018, all the way until December, 2019, I didn't change. Meaning my lead flow was the way my lead flow was the same. And, um, I was just doing the same thing. I was comfortable. So the okay. only thing that changed to me was because I honestly, I still close the same percentage. I still book the same appointments. I just have more leads and I have more people to see now. It's just, it's just a numbers game. Right. So yeah, I was, that's it. I was, I was fearful. I was fearful of investing more. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I don't come from money. So you start getting all this money coming in and you're like, Oh man, I, I, I'll stay, I'll stay at two to three grand a month. I'll stay there. I'll stay there. But two to three grand a month kept me at 10 to 20, 10 to 20. Right. Honestly, that was it. Funny part is I upped my lead flow to six to eight. And that's what took me to almost 430 last, last year. That's wow. all it was. That's all it was. Lead flow. I didn't watch. So many, I, I, I've studied Ivan a lot, but I didn't, I, 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 I stay, I, I just did the same thing I was doing. I just, I just got more people to see, man. Honestly, that's all it was. I didn't learn any new techniques. Like I said, I was blessed enough to hit the ground running. I was profitable. I had success. I just kept myself in that comfort zone of not investing more in myself. And the reality was I was cheating myself, bro. Cause looking back right. on it. I was, I could have already been doing what I'm doing now back then. Just, it's just a, a mindset. I was yeah. just cheating myself, yeah. you know? That, that's so, that's, that's really interesting that you have really a stretched out, like a really good look at exactly what kind of family first life screams from the housetop where they're just like buy more leads. Cause you came in really understanding already a need for life insurance, understanding the mortgage game, you know, um, as far as how to position products and you were successful right away and making money. And you literally, the only thing you did to bump it up after having plenty of experience, you know, over a year of experience on your belt was literally just, I bought more. <laughs> I just did more of what I always did. And it gave me more. I kid you not, bro. I look back on it. Dude, I issued almost a little over three hundred thousand dollars in eighteen months. So, like, <laughs> I did from from July to two thousand July two thousand eighteen to December two thousand eighteen. I did a little over a little over one hundred, and then in two thousand nineteen, I did a little a little over two hundred. So that's like three hundred in eighteen months, and uh -huh. then and then. Uh, but and again, then I, I was just doing the same thing, and I was getting the same results. And then sure. And like you said, I mean, and, and you said it yourself, you're like you, it was fear that was holding you back, you know, For sure. and, and it was fear of loss. It was just, and, and, I, come from and I get that, so. man. I, I get it. Cause I, I came from the sake background, not coming from a lot of money. You know, it's, it's so funny. You think you would get a lot more and it would take away your fear, but you have the same fear of, of losing when you have, you know, 10 grand in your bank account as you do when you had a thousand or whatever number it's so funny but right. um well wow so so what was your motivation what really made you finally believe hey i'm gonna double my my lead spend to get double the results what what was that for you um well it would just it was just kind of like getting uncomfortable because even though i was having success i literally had time in the field 
as a full-time agent, I was not running. I couldn't tell you that. I think I was running like maybe 15 appointments a, a, a week, 12 to 15, because that's the lead flow I had. So I had a lot more, I have a lot more time door knocking and things like that. A lot, a lot more downtime. And sure. this job, I believe, is more painful. The funny part is, is this job is painful when you're only investing so little, where when you, when you invest more, you have a lot more people to call, a lot more people to see. The crazy yeah. part about that is that the job is easier and the results are greater. It's, it, it's, it's like, it, that's like, I was like, wow, I cheated myself all this time, you know, like, because you realize when you, it, it takes, it takes six to eight grand a month to issue 40, 50, 60. I think a lot of Hall of Famers agree in that number. So, but it's not easy to just tell yourself, I'm going to invest that much money back, you know? But once you right. do, that's when you realize how easier it is. You book so many appointments within 15 minutes of the first, of one appointment, you're like, you know what? Uh, okay, got it. Um, we're doing this. You, you feel it because you have such a full calendar. You don't have to stay there too long trying to convince somebody to get insurance. And you're just onto right. the one that really wants your help. They appreciate they appreciate you being there. They're not playing games. What is this? What is that? Uh, come on now. So, I love what yeah, I do, that... but I don't want. I'm not. I'm not trying to convince people into into protecting their families, right? I challenge them up to a point, but but you can only yeah. get that. You can only get that posture when you have enough people to see, and you can only have enough people to see by investing so much in leads. I mean that there is no. There was no way around it. So you have Man, to get what, what, you, what, what you just said is so fundamental. And I, and I feel it, man. I, I was training the guy in the field yesterday. And, you know, yesterday, you know, I was blessed. I wrote 5K while I was training this guy. And, you know, we were going to appointment to appointment. And we had one or two people where, you know, they kind of just kind of threw us off. One of them was kind of rude, dismissive. I had a fresh lead that was like, oh, I didn't fill it out. And like, I even sent the picture. He's like, well, that's my handwriting, but it wasn't me, <laughs> you know, just being silly. And with those people, you know, I'm just right. like, ah, whatever. And he's kind of like, you really don't fight for it. And I was like, no. I was like, because I'm going to find those people, which of course we did, which they're serious about protecting their families. This, this appointment, uh, this information is serious. And I, that's when I enjoy my job. But when you're trying to squeeze the juice, you know, out of very few leads, that's where the job becomes unnecessarily stressful. Yeah. You put, you put pressure on yourself. The person you are sitting with feels it, you know, a, right. a lot of yeah. times. And, and you know, what's so funny and I, and I'm sure you can attest to this is when my first few months, my numbers are going really up and down and I was trying to squeeze the juice out of leads. And it's so funny. I might have a week where I ran 12 or 13 appointments and I wrote, I don't know, 2,500, 3,000. And then I would write twice the appointments. And in your mind, you would think, okay, simple math. I would write twice as much, but I wouldn't. I would write seven or eight or eight nine grand, or ten yeah. yeah like yeah. triple or quadruple you know quadruple those numbers so right it's a numbers game and it's super simple the more leads you get the more points you have the more ap you're gonna you're gonna write so you you said it all uh right yes. there we're awesome man so so what is your so obviously you were squeezing everything you could out of your limited leads before running about 15 a week now with a much higher lead flow what do your weeks look like now yeah, man. Uh, no less than 25 appointments, right? Uh, that's what I shoot for. I, I'll be completely transparent. Sometimes I still, I don't know, sometimes I mess up. I don't order, I don't order enough leads on time, and I see it. It is it, sure as day, uh, uh, sure enough, if I wasn't proactive getting enough leads, because I get up, you know, you have direct mail. I run direct mail final expense, direct mail mortgage, uh, CRM, and internet life. That's what I've been doing now, right? So direct mail, direct mail leads, sometimes you can't control how many you have. You know they're going to come. You just don't know how quickly they'll come. So in the weeks that I'm not paying attention to my lead flow, I pay the price. I, do, I end up not booking enough appointments and the numbers show it. But 
I try to book no less than 20, 24, 25. I shoot for 30, right? I mean, but that's my, that's my, that's my goal now. That's what I've been trying to do. That's what I've been doing actually, you know? So. Sure. Sure. Now, and one more thing about that. Would you, what would you say now is your typical AP on a weekly basis that, that you would say you're pretty consistent in writing? And obviously we all have weeks up and down, but now that you're running those appointments yeah 10 to 15 so 10 so to just 15, just yeah. write so so what you so you used to write you know 10 to 20 in a month and now you're writing right. 10 to 15 in a week so right that's uh that's pretty solid just running that's been just the running more leads. Like eight months. yeah and another thing to I, getting uncomfortable another thing to getting uncomfortable to tell you Here's the funny part about me. I'm uh, my parents are Middle Eastern, so I'm Middle Eastern blooded, but my accent is Hispanic. So Spanish, <laughs> believe it or not, is my first language. So when I first started doing this, I was conscious of my accent. So I was thinking, I don't want to go to. It's funny because when I was in banking for so many years, I still I spoke English and I still had the same accent. And people, I help people, but. Because now in the bank, I'm like, well, they got to do what I got to say, regardless of how I sound. I work for the bank. They got to do what I got to say, what I tell them. This right. is different. This is me, you know, trying to trying to earn their business and trust. So when I first started, I was running Spanish speaking leads, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's so, so like, funny. So, so you're Middle Eastern, but your first language is, is Spanish. Yes, I was born and raised in Puerto Rico. So wow. I started You're like cosmopolitan ice cream, man. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. So yeah, I will, I will run Spanish speaking leads because I will be fearful of my accent. But then that, that went away within a few months and I just been, um, you know, running. But uh, what was the question again? I apologize. I'm sorry. No, no, you're fine. And I was just talking about uh, what you were normally writing. You told me 10 to 15. Right. And right, yeah. So, so that's great, man. Wow. That's so strong. So, so tell me this, obviously you hit the ground running. Do you feel a lot of agents on here, you know, we're beginning and we have some people who are in a similar situation to you, they're getting traction, you know, finally writing consistently on their leads and they're starting to up their lead flow. They want to write more. Did you feel as far as your in-home presentation, obviously it doesn't seem like that was the hurdle for you, you know, it in the beginning, it was really just upping your leads, but have you, have you seen your ability and presentation in the home improve over time and what things brought that improvement for you? Um, listen, I can honestly tell you it was just posture, meaning that now that I got more appointments, I'm more direct. I'm not, I, I don't, report is five minutes and I only build rapport while I'm doing the financial inventory. Like I'm, on, I'm like, let's go, let's go, let's go. And that's really it. Honestly, when I tell you that I cheated myself, I did. I fall on the sword because I still do the same thing. I, I the, the presentation is the same. People trust me. The, you know, the, all, that, all, that, all that stuff that I'm on or I'm blessed with that's still the same. The only difference is that now, see before, because I had the time, I didn't have enough appointment. If I'm sitting with Gabriel and you're like, I don't know, blah, I will still kind of like still try a different angle, right? Let me see how can I earn his trust. Whereas now, because my calendar is fuller, I'm like, you know what? It is what it is. If I ended up having to convince this guy, Maybe I'll, maybe I'll close him, but then it will charge back because I already did that before, right? I went through that. So that's the only difference. And hopefully that answers your question. I would love to tell you that I learned a different type of intro or anything like that, but I did. And I still do the same thing that all the top producers teach, you know, the introduction. Here's what we're going to do today. We all, I, think we all, I think everybody knows that by now. So I still do that. The only difference, honestly, is just the 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 uh, the amount of appointments which which I then have a different posture where I can leave right away if I have to. Sure. No, don't don't apologize at all. That's the best possible answer you could have gave because I mean you you really this job is so simple and I feel like we we want or sometimes agents come in they want to make it complicated because we want to have I think it's natural especially if for folks who lack self confidence we want to have an excuse 
on why we can't win. But but you're really making this so simple. <laughs> you're you're saying, hey, you know, there really wasn't any change in the way that I was selling. Like I, I came off, I had a little bit of lack of self-confidence. I got over it. You know, I just went to work and all I really needed to do to go from being maybe typical or average in the insurance industry to being a Hall of Fame producer is I just bought more leads and the, and the numbers just followed. I bought more leads. I booked more appointments and that obviously affected you in the house because now instead of trying to, oh, I have, you know, maybe I only have three or three appointments today and I really want to sell something today. And I feel that pressure. This guy's jerking me around, but I don't have anywhere to be for five hours. You know, there now, you go. hey, I got, there you like, go. I'm already late from, I'm already late for my next appointment. <laughs> like Correct. if this guy's not going to buy, like I want to stop to go to the bathroom at least <laughs> before I make it to there my next go. one. <laughs> like, there you, go. you nailed it. You nailed it, bro. That's literally it. The honesty, that's it. Yeah. And that's what I try to teach. It, you know, all the agents that we have coming on board now, like the same thing, you know, like just take it from me. Just <laughs> I already step on those my landmines. Just just learn and go from it. Just learn and go with it, you know? Sure, sure. Well, very, that's awesome. We're great. Well, hey, we kicked that personal production horse to death. You were, you were great. Now let's transition to obviously you, you are building, you know, quite a bit now. You're bringing on a lot of agents um talk to us about how that started did you start building right from the beginning has that something you started doing as you, your production started jumping up what was that for you yeah so the building part i quit twice right i started i will bring some agents in and i see they wouldn't do nothing and then i just quit it i like you know what and everything is funny because i can relate the building investing in the building side how it took a long time for me to get uncomfortable investing high into the lead flow. That's how investing in the building side, that's how I saw it as well. I'm like, okay, so I got to put now, I'm putting all this money into leads. Now I got to put all this money into the other side. It took, it's just fear, honestly. But yeah. I quit, I quit it twice, full disclosure, because I just wasn't, I guess, maybe patient enough or, um, Ivan did a did a training the other day that I related so well because he he explained how when he was bringing people on board he would just be like hey this is it uh, because I I figured everything out myself I was the easiest hire you could get I, I I only call my offline from the home most of the time that was it when I first started everything else I figured out on my own I called the carriers I did all that and I was expecting people to do the same thing. And I will bring people on board and I will see that they wouldn't do any of that. And then I'll be like, you know what? I'm, uh, it is what it is. I'm, I'm not doing it. So I quit. Sure. And then I did it again a year later and I quit it again. So now I'm all in on the building side because now I got staff. I got, I got slots. Like I, I, I have a lot of money going into that side. So now I'm learning how to relate to people, understanding that there is different levels of, not everybody wants to be a Hall of Fame producer. Not even everybody wants to be a 20K producer. So it's kind of me understanding what is it that they want and then hopefully hopefully, uh, um, t telling them, okay, if you only want to do 5000 a month, you should do 300 bucks a week, uh, you know, or something like that. But understand that the results you're going to have, the five, if you do 300 bucks a week, you might not see the five grand until week three. Just understand that, you know? Mm. <laughs> um, sure. Again, and, and as I'm and, and as I'm talking to you about it, uh, it's I'm still trying to figure it out. You know, we just hit VP, and I'm very blessed to 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 have a team. That awesome, is, great job. Thank you. Uh, I mean, I couldn't have done it with the team. I have some some great leaders now, so that's a beautiful part. It's like I finally was able to attract and work with people that really want it just as bad. So now I'm spending my time more with them and then helping their teams. I, I, it's just it's just another it's just another skill set that I really didn't understand and I'm still trying to learn it as we speak and I love it it gives me no there was no um like when I was in the, when, before I was talking to you I was at an agent at home he just had his first sale so it gives oh, nice me, for me that was for me it's like man I feel so more happy I missed my last sale and and I even if I had made my my if I had made my own sale 
him seeing him win great, gave me great joy because I know what it will do for him and his family. So, right. so um, that's where we at, man. Uh, and it's just kind of like, but I'm, I'm, I'm learning, you know, I'm learning, I'm growing. I just understand that the, the, the edges do need to hear from me. I would just have um, this, the, I would bring people on board and I wouldn't maybe check in on them. I would just expect them to learn, you know, not, and just not check in on them because I'm mm -hmm. so busy running. So, um, so it's just that, man, just kind of like bringing people on board and whoever wants it, wants it, but I'll make myself available for whoever wants to just take this opportunity and run with it, you know? Sure, sure, sure. So, so yeah, so it sounds like you had a, a much more dynamic evolution on the building side than you did personally on your for personal sure. production. Yes. Yeah. Yes. You said, yes, brother. So, yes. Because you, uh, you know, you were already successful as a personal producer. Just up your lead game, and it was as simple as that. But for the, the growth side, you started, quit a couple times, and it sounds like your main issue was is that you were just, and I and I see this sometimes at a uh, top tier producers because you know you came in crushing it. You were very motivated. You had a, a strong sense of belief and you found success very early and you were you were self-starter and it sounds like you were you were discouraged because you weren't finding you <laughs> right and and the people that you were you were hiring you know you were like I'm looking I'm looking for me and I and I felt the same way you know it's hard when you're like look what, what don't you understand don't you want to make 20 30k a month why wouldn't you but exactly. but but people are different so exactly. it, it sounds exactly. like it sounds like you had a big just change of perception and how you looked right. at the whole and what brought that on? Was it purely just getting taking the punches and figuring it out? Or did you have a mentor that helped you learn all those things? No, well, yeah, I have great up ones, you know, Joe, uh, Trey, Andrew, you know, those those guys, they poured into me, they gave me their time. This was all on me, bro. They they you know, this was all on me. It's like it's like me telling a brand new agent what you need to do to go be successful on the field and then him not doing it. That was me on the building side. That's why sure. I take accountability. Um, that was all me. So and real was, quick, and but, but before you grow on that thought, let me ask you, what do you think? Because obviously you listen on the production side and you were successful. Why do you think, and I'm the same way, I can be very hard headed. Why do you think it took you so long to be receptive to what they were you they were saying on the building side? What what hangups did you have or what, what do you think it was? Ah man. I don't know because I would do it, but then I would quit. I would just wouldn't have fortitude. I would just okay. It's not instant gratification. Mm. We can go, you can literally have a negative $500 bank account right now. And next week selling insurance, you can have positive five grand. It's that right. quick. You flip, we flip money that quick doing this thing, right? And the building side is not, it's not. It takes three to six months. If you do something right now, you will, you will need to wait three to six months to see fruition from that. And I wouldn't. I wouldn't invest, I wouldn't stay consistently doing it, consistently, consistently to see those results. And I would just quit. I would just get discouraged and quit. And because money's rolling in on my own production, I was like, well, I'll just keep selling, selling. But then getting back to your last question, I think what happened was, man, I'm a competitive person. And I see a lot of guys that started with me just taking off and mm. uh, having their teams. And now the integrity effect, fear of sure. loss, fear of loss, man. I'm still, and it's like, dude, I got this money in the bank. What is it doing for me? I'm paying taxes. It's like, I'm young enough that if I lose it, I can gain it back. Let me just get uncomfortable one more time. Extremely uncomfortable. Again, let's put, let's go into the building side and let's see where it goes. And, um, I mean, that was basically it. It was more like fear of loss being competitive, seeing guys that came with me at the, around the same time, you know, you look at it like in sports, uh, the same draft class, you know, and yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> they're doing half a million. You see guy, Dave Witcher, but he's I mean, you, you know, you know, the guys, you know, it's like, wow, you know, so it is me. It is definitely me. I'm the one 
they're going through they're going through their people they're they're doing this and they're finding people that want to do the deal so i have to put in the pay, i have to pay i have to pay the price and uh well, so yeah, well, there's a, that's answered the question, uh, man. Yeah, yeah, you, you answered it excellent. And I, and I see a few big pro tips. Well, for one, I, I think a big key to your success, and I'm sure it's more than just in FFL, I'm sure it affects you all throughout your life positively, but it, it's obvious that you take a, a large amount of personal responsibility. Even talking to you about your personal production, about your team building, you were constantly looking at you and being like, what can I do different? You weren't looking at different circumstances. When you found out with your production, you're like, I need to up my lead game. When it came to the building side, you're like, I, you, you saw, you have that indomitable spirit. So you saw other people succeeding and you saw other people, you know, that you came in, you're like, hey, like, what do I need to fix to get this? Because you, because you wanted that, that same success. So, so those things are huge. Just the attitude you had of what can I do to improve? And that I go. think was a big part of your success. And then um, that real, what was I going to say there? I, I lost the thought for a second. That, um, that switch in your mindset of, man, I lost it. I, I, I should have wrote it down. Normally I have a little notepad, but hey, I lost bro, you're, my you're, I'll tell you this, you're amazing at this, man. Uh, I, I, okay. didn't have the, I never had the pleasure. I never had the pleasure of talking or seeing you, but you are amazing at this. The way you do these interviews, that's a great skill set, man. I oh, make, I appreciate it, Sahara. I, Thank I, you. I got a good one. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, man. Well, hey, I, I got well, a yeah, great bro, one in Ivan, so I'm blessed. You're rephrasing myself much better than your. I appreciate how you're catching what I'm trying to say and saying in a very, very specific way better way i appreciate that so yeah bro you're nailing on the head man yeah exactly. i caught it i caught what i was thinking so <laughs> I, I i lost it and i caught it so but thank you so much so what you said was so powerful about the instant gratification of what we do when so you you were listening to what your upline your mentors were saying you were applying it and it was easy to have that faith because like you said Monday, I could listen to what they're saying. Maybe I'm not sure, but then by Monday of next week, I got money in my bank and I'm like, okay, what they said was right. But you got to have a lot more faith in the building game because Monday, you're, it's February 1st, you're putting it in and you might not be enjoying that until June. Correct. And, me, you, and you, mind you, you still got to put in you still got to continue weekly putting that money into that side of the business, right? I mean, it's just kind of like, it just built, you know, growing mindset. I never, for some people are easier. It took, it took a long, you know, it took a longer time for me to understand the business side. It's just the business acumen. I'm a much mm -hmm. better business person today than what I was two years ago. That's for sure. I understand sure. money better now. Sure, sure. Well, no wonder, man. I mean, you, um, that, that attitude just that you have of taking that personal responsibility, I mean, that adds rocket fuel to whatever you're doing because it takes so much time out of pointing fingers and you're just, you're looking in. It's a healthier way because I can fix it. If I'm blaming Gabriel, I know if it's Gabriel this, Gabriel that, Ivan this, Ivan that, then we're, okay, then, then I just screwed myself because if that's true, I can't win. Yeah, you can't fix those Ivan, people. If it's Ivan's fault, if it's Sean Mike, if it's Family First Life, if it's them and I didn't win, then okay, well, that's why. I'm like, no, nah, man, there's people winning. It's me. How do I, you know what I'm, so, I mean, I don't want to sugarcoat the beginning. The beginning wasn't easy for me. You know what I mean? I went through everything. The no-shows, sure. the missed sales, a uh, week, a uh, negative, I'll spend, you know, a thousand this week. Nothing came back, but I wasn't, I wasn't confused. I wasn't confused about that side because I know it's on me. Like I can't, the team side of things, even though I come from a sports background, that's where I was like, man, I, these guys are not doing what I'm doing. That's why I can't win on that side. And eventually I grew into that, but getting back to your, to your, to your, uh, to your observation. Yes, bro. I put it all on me. I've always been like that. And I always, and I think I'll always be like that because it's just a healthier way of looking at life because I can fix it. Sure. If, 
Sure. Well, I, I'm sure you're continue to, to be successful with that mindset. Well, hey, I want to, um, one more question here, and then I'll open it up for group questions. We want to be respectful of your time. I know you're in the middle of your work run day. As a builder now, obviously, you know, you change your perceptions, you're bringing in all kinds of different people. What, what are you going through when you're bringing someone in and you realize that we have room for everybody. We have room for more Sahars. We have room for people who want to be part-time, right? 20K a month. Hey, we have room for people who maybe want to do five grand. What are you doing to help you and help that person reach their goals? What, what are you bringing in? If I was coming in and you're trying to figure out where, am I, where I'm at, is there anything specific you're doing? Are you just watching? What does that look like for you? Great question, man. And I'm still evolving to that. I'm still evolving as a leader to that, honestly, bro. But um, what I'm, I'm having a conversation now, like, let's say you're coming in. I'm like, okay, well, Gabriel, what do you want out of this thing? You know, what, what, I mean, cause a lot, what I noticed was everybody wants to do 40 K. Yeah, man, let's do 40 K. But, but then you're looking at the work ethic. It's like, dude, how would you, ex it, I mean, it took, it took, First and foremost, it took accountability on myself. Again, going back to me, I'm like, okay, it's on me. I'm not communicating to them what it takes to get this done. So it took like asking some guys like, hey, man, if you're doing five grand, seven grand, eight grand a month, and you're calling me, asking me, how do I get to 10? And I'm telling you what I'm doing. How would you expect your result, my results with your work ethic? I, I had to be that direct. How would you, listen, I'm, no, I'm not more special. I'm not. You actually, I would tell the guys, you, you sound better than me. You're, you, you look, you, I've seen your aunt home. It's better than mine. You're just not seeing enough people. Why can't you get that? So going through conversations like that with active agents as I were growing, then I'm like, okay, well, let me slow down. Maybe they just, they, they don't, maybe they don't want to do that yet. Right. Cause I, the ones sure, that, sure. the ones that want to do it and I tell them how to do it and they don't do it, then that's on them. Okay. Well, you know what to do. I'm here for you but you already know what to do. But if I'm bringing somebody on board, I'll try to see what is it that they're looking for. Um, most people, I kind of do encourage them if they have a job to stay, to stay with their job, you know, let's, let's give it a few months. And uh, I tell them, okay, well, what is it that you want? I want to replace my income from my job. Okay, well, let's, 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 let's work into that. So you want to earn five, six, seven grand how much can you spend on leads? And, what I, and I also start matching people as well, just a little bit. I wouldn't just buy leads from, initially I did that too. I will buy leads. I will buy, from, I will pay for all the, you know, I will give them the first batch. And obviously they don't have, I, nobody, you have, you got to have skin in the game. So right. now what I do is my, I match them up to a point, a couple hundred bucks to mm. get going. And, okay. um, I just kind of understand what is it that they want to do because um, I think a lot of people is it, you not many people are gonna I mean I know some people in Family First Life are doing it they're walking in and doing fifty grand like in a few months and that's that's special um, I cannot tell you that I can teach somebody that mindset right away so I guess I'll grow into that but right now I'll just tell them the basics how much can you invest in leads let's go from there how many dials. Oh, if they call me the next day, it, hey, man, I'm, I only have one appointment. Well, how many dials you make? A hundred. And you dialed all day? Yeah. Okay. Well, how many? I'm confused now because if you really dialed eight hours, did you? so you only, dial you only have a hundred dials for the whole day. You're setting yourself up for failure, man. You have to look at this job like any other job we've had, which is, we're sitting somewhere. We got to be there eight hours. So the mirror doesn't lie. You have to look right. yourself in the mirror and say, well, you know what? How many, um, how, how, how many dials you did really? How, did you really triple dial? Did you, did you do what it takes, you know? Sure. And, sure. Well, and so, well, it's really obvious that you are, you're being, you've grown to where you're very direct. You, you know what it is to be successful in this industry. You're having a very open, upfront conversation with people at the beginning, helping set the expectation. And you're when they come to you with their progress or lack thereof, you are just highlighting the simple things you already told them. Correct. Correct. 
Yeah. Well, that's well, that's great. Well, that's great. But well, hey, man, Sahar, this has been a, a clinic, man, <laughs> on uh, on personal production, on uh, on team building. It's been great. I like to open it up for two or three questions right at the beginning here. If there's anyone sure. with a question for Sahar, um, go ahead and and speak up. I, I'm on my phone here, so I can't see everyone raising their hand. Anybody on here? Going once. Hall of Fame producer, building a, uh, a huge team. Nothing you can learn from this guy? Okay. <laughs> um, all right. Well, hey, Sahar, uh, we always love to ask people, what is a obviously we have everyone on here. You know, we have people who are, you know, I sat, I saw Matt Borsch on here, you know, right in 50 K a month, building a huge team. I saw a couple of people just getting started, just getting licensed, just got their first, you know, sale under their belt. What would you say if you had a shout out kind of a, an advice that would go to everyone in between. And we've given so much good info that could apply to so many people, but if you had one parting shout that you would say that might apply to everybody, what, what would that be? I would just say, don't cheat yourself. If you, if you're already selling, just double down. The system works. You've seen it. So, like, if you're producing three grand a month, you you're winning, and at a, at a smaller scale. So, you already kind of figured out what you need to do. So, just keep get uncomfortable. Don't cheat yourself. Buy more leads weekly. Travel if you have to. That's set yourself up to win. By by just following the system and doubling down in product and because well, we we, we got to sell first we got to put our mask on so we have to we have to sell first so just double down on your just double down on your on your activity just double down on your investments and just don't cheat yourself <laughs>